Hey everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Buggery Designs. I'm going to show you how to make this cute little pouch. Um, I've designed it specifically to hold a little Debbie Pumpkin Delight. Let me show you. These can be found anywhere, all grocery stores. Isn't that cute? My kids love these. So it's just a little pouch and these kind of roll over. You can see they're not, it's not a, it's not a box. It's kind of a, a rolled over uh, lid to make it a pouch. Um, these little Debbie uh, cakes, if you w are wondering where they are in your area, you can click on the link on my blog. There's a little Debbie cake finder, <laughs> which is so funny. You enter your zip code and it'll tell you exactly what store to find them in. This is what they look like. I love using Little Debbie snacks as treats because they're so inexpensive, $2.19, and you get, uh, I don't know, oh, eight, oh my gosh, eight in this box. Usually it's five or six. So a really affordable way to give a treat. Okay, let's get started. I am only using one stamp today, and it's a sentiment from the Harvest Hellos. Hey there, pumpkin. I love that. Isn't that cute? Um, and everything else is just paper. So let's get started first making the holder. Now, don't feel like you have to frantically write down all these measurements. There's a PDF over on my blog. Um, this is from originally from a Facebook Friday project. So there's a PDF with all the pro products I'm using, as well as those measurements that you're going to need. Okay, this is a piece of soft suede cardstock that measures nine and a half by six and a half. And we're going to score the long side at three and a fourth and six and a fourth. Then we're gonna turn it to the short side and score it at three fourths, one and a half, five, and five and three fourths. All right, move that out of the way. Now grab your bone folder and you wanna just burnish all those lines. This will make them nice and crisp. We're gonna cut away some of these um, sections, but I like to do my burnishing before I start trimming. Okay, now grab your scissors, and we're actually gonna cut away the four corners. So let's start there. We'll just cut those off like that. Going all the way around. This uh, one tab that we're leaving up is going to kind of fold down and squeeze around the other tabs. It'll create a nice little rounded edge for you. All right, now go in and cut these into the score line. All right, these are the ones that are gonna kind of cross over. And like that, okay? So here's what your piece looks like. We've got these, and these are gonna fold in like this. But here, uh, before we do that, we wanna round all the corners. I've got my detailed trio punch, and I am going to just round off these edges, these corners, all the way around. And I'm also gonna do these right here, and this can be a little tricky. You wanna fold that in so that you can get that in there. You've got to kind of fold it all over. There we go, two more. And the last one. There we go, whoops, there we go. All right, now I'm gonna take these legs again, or these arms, and we're gonna fold them in like this. So I only need to put adhesive on two of them. So I think I'll, use, I'll do these two right here. I'm gonna use my Stampin' Seal Plus. This is a really good, strong adhesive for your 3D projects. And I'm gonna fold that over and in, and over and in. So these little, see how that's gonna give you a rounded edge right there? It's gonna hold your little cookie in. So let's put our cookie right in there. And then we have these. Now, remember, this isn't a fold. This is a rounded flap. So I'm gonna actually take my bone folder and just kind of run it over to kind of break down that cardstock a little bit to make it curl so it'll easily um, round over. All right, so I'm gonna put that one 
over like that and that one like that. So there you go. You can see how it's rounded. Now I've got a piece of designer series paper from the, can I remember the name of the paper? In Good Taste <laughs> designer series paper. This paper is great. It has textures. You can see there's a wood grain on the background. This is kind of like maybe a woven fabric. And I've just cut a strip of two by 12. It's probably too long. So I'm gonna to need to cut it off a little bit. Probably, let's see, two by 10. Well, maybe two by nine. You could even save yourself some paper that way. All right, so this is a belly band. It's not gonna be attached to the box. It's just gonna be attached end over end like that. So as you saw in the beginning, you can just slide it off, okay? Now I've got this beautiful embroidered ribbon. Again, sticking with these neutral colors. Um, very uh, natural looking. I kind of wanted this to just be very fall looking. Not a whole lot of bright colors. I'm gonna take this and tie this around. This will be part of our, part of our um, belly band. It'll slide right off. Whoops. There we go. And there we go. Okay, now let's make our tag. I'm gonna use the nice little pumpkin dies right here from the Autumn Essential die set. Um, I really like doing tone on tone, so I'm gonna take this one and this one, and I'm gonna cut them out of very vanilla cardstock. Before I do that, I'm gonna take some of my adhesive sheets. I've cut a strip of adhesive sheets. They come 12 inches long, and I'm gonna put that right there on the back of this so that when I cut this, this um, the top layer that's really skinny, it's already gonna have that adhesive on it. So I won't have to try really carefully to put adhesive on the back of that really thin cardstock. I'm a messy gluer and I love these adhesive sheets. They save me from making a mess. All right, so we're, we're gonna cut these out of very vanilla, the solid bottom and the opened um, top layer. All right, let's move that out of the way and get all of those out. And sometimes my die doesn't want to come out and I don't have my tool here handy so I can just drop it and sometimes it'll pop out. But of course, we're making a video. So why would it do what I want it to do? <laughs> Only when the camera is not rolling will that trick work. All right, there we go. Now get let's get our solid and... I'm gonna peel off that backing. It turns it into a sticker, which is so great. Once you start doing this with your die cuts, it's kind of addicting. You don't wanna glue any die cuts. I wanna use those adhesive sheets on everything. Okay, now what else do I have for my tag? If I can find my pieces here. I've got a crumb cake stitched circle. Um, this was cut with the second smallest so not the very smallest die the second smallest from crumb cake cardstock and I've got just a strip here of um, Cajun craze and I'm going to stamp my sentiment sentiment right there like that all right now I'm gonna punch both ends with my tailored tag punch this isn't necessarily what this punch is designed for but man it works good when you have a small piece See that there? How nice. All right. I'm gonna just put a mini dimensional right there. And we'll put that right across our pumpkin. Okay, now I'm gonna take two dimensionals and kind of straddle that ribbon right there. And put that on just like that. But we're not done. I wanted to do one more thing. I've got these cute acorn trinkets. They're really heavy and I hesitate to use them on cards. Um, I guess if you're not mailing your card, it would be fine, but I worry about what it would do through the mail, but they're perfect for 3D projects just like this. So I couldn't wait to use it. I'm going to take my linen thread and I'm going to just kind of feed that underneath that bow there. I can get it to slide and I'm going to cut that end off and they already have these little these little holes so you can just thread it right through 
and tie it on. The, the acorns are real, really heavy and solid. They're really cool um, embellishments, but I, again, I know that a glue dot probably wouldn't hold it on because it's so nice and heavy. So I, I wanted to make sure that I tied it on so I won't have to worry about it going anywhere. And there you have it. You guys, how cute. These, this is a pretty simple project, one that you could easily multi um, mass produce, make multiples of. And it's not really Halloween. So if you're not really a Halloween person, but you want to make some treats, um, these are perfect. They, they're a little jack-o'-lantern cookie, but um, to me, when you put them in something like this, it takes the Halloween aspect out of it. And they're more of a fall treat. Okay, you guys, click on the link here on YouTube to go over to my blog to find that PDF. You have to scroll down. It's under the last photo, and it's free for everyone. And you'll find some other project inspiration over there as well. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, everybody. Have a great one. Bye-bye.